Okay, so Travelling Hopefully was a jointly authored chapter with uh, my colleague Beth Weaver, who's working on a doctoral research project on desistance. And um, the basic idea for it was that both of us have been working in the field of desistance research and specifically thinking about its relevance for um, social work or probation practice. Um, and a range of key messages have begun to emerge there around the importance of relationships, the qualities of the relationship between the worker and the service user or offender if you like, um, the significance of their social context and uh, the challenges that that might represent um, and one or two other uh, key factors. But that particular paper was more concerned to try to think a little bit harder about the nature of the desistance process or journey, which is what we're referring to in the title, and what the worker might have to do to try to facilitate or support that kind of journey. Um, we developed the ideas further in, in another paper for the National Offender Management Service called Changing Lives. Um, and I, I've given a lecture recently where I start by trying to ask what kind of journey is it? So is it a homecoming? Is it, uh, I mean, a homecoming towards reintegration that one might think of in relation to released prisoners, for example? Or is it an exodus, moving from one way of living, place of living, um, to another? Or is it some kind of race, uh, I don't know, a race against time, race to desist before the system wears you out completely, um, or whatever. And, and basically having thought about what the best metaphor for the journey is, um, a range of issues emerge about how would you prepare for a journey, what, what resources do you need to plan um, your journey, what kind of support team do you need around you. How, how can you best understand the, the territory through which you're travelling, the, the nature of the terrain, um, the kind of equipment that you need, the pace at which you're going to make progress, uh, when you're going to stop and be refreshed um, and re-energised for the next stage. And we've kind of used the extended metaphor of the journey as a way of helping practitioners to think about what their roles might be at each of these stages as well as ultimately um, raising the question of uh, arrival. Is there any arrival? Do people uh, reach an end point on a desistance journey or are we really talking about a lifelong project of integration so that um, a person is, is constantly moving towards uh, forms of uh, integration in the life of the community where they are enabled to live well for themselves and for others as a good citizen um, making a positive contribution. And in a sense, that's not a destination at which any of us ever arrive. It's like an ongoing project about our individual lives in families and communities. So maybe the metaphor begins to break down at that stage. But travelling hopefully um, takes us a little bit further by thinking about some of the dynamics uh, around issues of identity and diversity. So looking at um, gender differences in desistance journeys, differences in relation to ethnicity and differences in relation to religiosity um, of individuals. And uh, although the body of evidence around those themes is, is limited, what it seems to be saying, or, or at least our conclusion from reviewing it for that paper, is that the, the basic characteristics of the journey are similar, but the territory is different. Um, that for some people desistance is much more of an uphill struggle because the social conditions, the cultural conditions of their effort uh, to desist are um, awkward. Uh, it's much more difficult in a particular social context to acquire a job or a partner or to re-establish, uh, for example, a significant role as a parent, um, depending on uh, whether or not your uh, existing relationships have um, survived or failed to survive the period of turbulence while you've been involved in offending on drug use. And that varies by ethnic background, for example. Um, at least in some studies there are indications that it does. And similarly for young men and for young women, the pathways into adulthood and parenthood are 
um, structurally constructed in quite different ways and culturally constructed differently in different communities. So sometimes those things are uh, providing a kind of wind in the sails for desistance and sometimes it's desisting into the wind as it were and they are um, obviously the task for the individual and the task for the worker is likely to be much more challenging. So essentially that's the kind of issue that we're trying to explore in travelling hopefully and then in the changing lives report that developed a little bit further on those themes. And the next stage um, is to think further um, with practitioners and managers about what kind of practice methodologies are implied by this type of understanding and how far can you go with desistance research to develop uh, processes, frameworks, mechanisms that enable people to um, think through these issues on a case-by-case -case basis so that they can be hopefully more effective in supporting the, the process. Have you got further research planning already? Well, um, there is uh, within the National Offender Management Service at the moment an offender engagement programme and at the moment there's a an ongoing tendering and contracting process, but it looks likely as if uh, it looks likely that there will be um, further research funded by NOMS to develop some of this thinking over the course of the next six months or a year or so, in fact two years or so. Yeah. Thank you very much.